I am Ines Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create a realistic Pokeball in Cinema 4D. So in the first part we will be modeling the Pokeball and in the second part we will be texturing the Pokeball and third part will be uh, animating some, th some things and also doing some effects in Adobe After Effects and uh, maybe in a fourth part. I'm not sure right now but one thing I am sure and that's what, and that we're going to model a Pokeball right now in Cinema 4D. So and go right here in the primitives and choose a sphere tool and I'm going to resize that sphere to 6.35 centimeters and these should be the exact settings of a real life pokeball so change the type to hemisphere and maybe add 120 um, segments uh, of the uh, to the sphere uh, like so okay um, so another thing that I will be doing is create a new null object and this is going to be like a folder we're going to name it assets and then I'm going to click on our sphere, hold control and drag our sphere out. I'm going to put that in the assets. And, and this way we can use the assets later on if we're going to change something to this sphere. And we mess up, we can just take the uh, previous sphere with the exact same settings uh, for a uh, yeah, something later in this tutorial. So hold alt and click double click here. So these two dots become red. And that way we won't see the assets in our viewport or in our final render. So um, they're just hidden and we can use them whenever we want. Now for the sphere, I'm going to rename this to red cap. Yeah, so we rename it to red cap and then make it editable by pressing C on the keyboard. Then go to um, your keyboard and press U, L and then we are going to the polygon tool here and you're going to see that we have a loop selection. If you don't know how to do that, go to select and choose loop selection. Choose the bottom um, part here and then just delete it. Then hold control and press A on the keyboard, right click and use the extrude tool. And in the extrude tool, make sure we have create caps selected. So it's checked on and zoom in a little bit. And then we're going to drag out, uh, well, drag in our extrusion just a tiny bit. Something like this should work fine. Once we have done that, we are going to add another primitive and the cylinder tool here. And I'm going to make it a height of one and a radius of 1.35. I don't know the actual radius of this one, um, but I guess 1.35 works perfect. So um, go back to the object tool, rotate tool, and then rotate it in the z-axis 90 degrees. Then move it at the beginning of our sphere so it actually um, yeah, cuts through our sphere uh, cap here. And then we're going to select our um, bool tool right over here. And we're going to drag out our red cap in here and our cylinder. That way it's going to make a cutout of our um, yeah, red cap right over here. Once we have done that, I'm actually going to save my project first. If anything crashes, we still have our project file. Something that you should always do is save your projects. Um, yeah, enough because some things, um, because sometimes you may lose everything and that's no fun. So, um, okay, we have our bool. I'm going to rename this to red cap. Then I'm going to open up our assets and I'm actually going to drag in our cylinder tool as well. I'm going to drag out our sphere um, right here rename the sphere to white cap and I'm going to make it editable as well and then rotate it 180 degrees this time and again go to the polygon selection tool press UL for a loop selection and do the same for the top part right now then control A and we're going to right click again and extrude it but now instead of just this tiny bit we're going to extrude it in a little bit more something like so so now we have our white cap and our uh, red cap. And again, I'm going to um, choose a bool tool and duplicate that cylinder. So control and drag it out. Uh, close the red cap, put the white cap in the bool and the cylinder into the bool. Rename this to white cap. Organizing everything is also very important so we can easily see and uh, this, yeah, see everything that we're working with. Uh, so once you have done that, we can start with the inner part of our Pokeball and that is the black sphere so create well actually take out the sphere again out of our asset and make it a standard sphere right now so uh, we're going to make it a little bit smaller something like this here and also make it editable by pressing well uh, so now we have something like this 
uh, create a new bull tool and we are also going to drag out our cylinder right here and I'm actually going to make a copy of the cylinder and I'm uh, well of the sphere and black inside and I'm also going to put that into the assets folder if we need these sizes uh, later on in this tutorial so I'm going to drag and uh, drop the sphere into the bull as well as the cylinder and then into the bull I'm going to make it intersect and then I'm going to move our uh, sphere just a little bit and uh, well something like this should be fine just make sure it's not that thick and then I'm also going to copy that sphere and uh, make it a hemisphere right now. There we go. So now we have our top part. If we are going to render this out, it's going to be seamless. Uh, but now we have our top part and our bottom part with the um, button here. We're going to uh, make this sphere editable and hold Ctrl A, right click and extrude it. And extrude it in again. So it's going to cover the um, closing cap here. Okay, perfect. So now we have our... Um, black inside red cap and I'm going to rename this to button cap and select these two and hold alt and press G on the keyboard to group them and I'm going to rename this to um, red black cap okay so now we have our top part um, so now what we want to do is um, just fill up this uh, empty space right over here um, to do that we're actually um, well, actually, uh, we should have um, done something differently here. Uh, delete the black cap and I'm going to um, copy out the black inside here. I'm going to put that into our um, folder again and I'm going to make it editable again. Press UL on the keyboard and disable the white cap so we can completely focus on the black inside. And actually, I deleted it uh, right away here. But we should keep these two sizes here, uh, well, these two parts, and then start, uh, well, the two rows. And then we're going to delete everything apart from that. Okay, there we go. And delete all of these. And then if we're going to enable the white cap again, it should be completely filled up. Okay, there we go. So now we have our black inside cap here. Um, but one thing is that it's not thickened, so we're going to hold Ctrl, press A, and again, extrude it inwards, just like until it's uh, filling up the button here. Okay, there we go. And then another thing that we want to do is um, again, uh, take the black inside, copy it out. And now it's for the um, white cap actually. So we're going to um, make it editable as well. Uh, make it a hemisphere first. And I'm going to disable this one and the red cap so we can completely focus on the bottom part of our um, caps here. So this is the black inside. I'm going to rotate it um, 180 degrees. There we go. And I'm going to press C on the keyboard and UL to make a loop selection and delete the top part. Then Control A and to select all of these and then just um, make it, um, well, by holding the scale tool, make it smaller. And actually, and this is a little mistake again. Uh, it should actually fill uh, the inside of our um, white cap and this is not what it's doing. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to choose the black inside and drag it out. Make it a hemisphere as I said. So that's why, why the assets come in handy. If you make a mistake you can just jump in there and take the exact same thing and start over. So um, I'm going to make it a hemisphere and rotate it 180 degrees. And just make sure the radius is smaller than the uh, cap. Um, so I'm going to make it um, smaller. But this is way too small, so I'm going to try and figure it out here. Maybe six. Should make sure it's actually closing in here. So 6.1 should be fine, or six. 0.05, there we go, 0.06, no, 0.04, so a little bit of searching, but if you want to make something perfect, we should do it this way. Okay, so we have it um, pretty much figured out, and now we can make it editable, press UL to make a loop selection and delete this part. Now hold Ctrl, press A on the keyboard again, right click and extrude it, and just make it a little bit thicker, like so. 
So now we have this part. Uh, we can enable the red cap again and then the red black cap again and everything should be looking fine. So looks great actually. Okay, so now we have this. Uh, another thing we can do now is um, actually we're going to copy this button cap, drag it out, and we're going to make it the cylinder like 120, and we're going to make this sphere larger. And that way we have our button that's coming out, so we can play around a little bit, make it smaller, just like a real Pokeball, I think. Um, something like this maybe. Don't make it too large here. And now it's also, um, well the difference between making a new cylinder or using this one here is that it's also a little bit like rounded up so it's actually um, playing in nicely with our Pokeball. So now we can again duplicate that button cap and actually create a, a new copy and make it a little bit larger again and also make it smaller so we have the inside of our button like so and if we're going to check this uh, we have something like like this here and this is actually how they are doing it well this looks very similar to the actual pokeball okay so i'm going to uh, select these two here hold alt and press g and make this uh, rename this to button black inside is of the white so i'm going to hold this and this uh, with Control and alt g to group this bottom part and then this and this and again um alt g rename this to top part and then for the top part one thing that i will do as well is make a new null object and i'm actually going to move it all the way to the end here so i'm going to uh, go to the other views here and try and find myself the top part. So I'm going to open up this one and zoom in just, uh, well, actually the top part is not that easily. Uh, go to the right part and this is, oh, the right part is actually the behind part. So the front part should be fine. Okay, so here we can easily see the end of our Pokeball. So we have to drag this null object to this part here, so to the actual axis we're, we're going to open up the Pokeball. Okay, there we go. And we're going to rename this to um, top part again. And then just uh, drag the top part into the top part. And if we go back to the um, perspective here, and we're going to the object tool, if we're going to rotate it, it's going to open up and uh, close down. And actually, we also need to put on the, the, the buttons here. So, so now it's opening up like a real Pokeball. So some final touches we need to do is uh, nothing in real life actually has uh, 90 degrees perfect edges. So we need to add some bevel and we're going to use this bevel tool here. So go to the bottom part and add this to uh, the black inside. And just make sure the uh, use angles is not selected. And I'm also going to change the offset to 0.1 maybe. And this is even too much. So 0.01 maybe. And now we have a small bevel right here, so we can see, and this is going to add a little bit more realism. So maybe 0 0.005, well, 005, uh, so we have a smaller bevel. Just make it very subtle. Subtle things are always nice, uh, okay. And then if we select the white cap, I'm going to hold Alt and G and rename this to white cap again. But now we can drag the bevel into that same uh, null object here. Also make it like uh, 0.05 or 0.01. Now we have some bevel here, so that's also. Um, also for reflections, bevels are very important. Um, right now you can't see it, but if we're going to add a light, drag the light over here and add a shadow, soft shadow just uh, to, to show you something. We can see that bevels are really coming out a little bit, so especially with uh, reflections, you're going to see that the highlights and uh, the bevels are going to take more highlights, and that's uh, pretty cool as well. So now uh, we have done this for the um, bottom part. For the top part, I'm also only going to do it with the um, actually outer circle here, and this one here, and I'm going to use a bevel again, put it uh, right over here, and make it 0.1. Well. 
and choose use angles. Um, 0.05, which one did I use in the bottom part? I used 0.01. There we go. So now we have a small edge here and it's going to help out just a little bit. On the button it's not possible um, because of the um, bool objects. It's getting a little bit tricky. Um, but it's not going to be visible uh, from too far away. It's just on the main edges that it's uh, quite important to have them. Like right here, we can see our edge right uh, right now, and that's because of, and that's because of the uh, edges that we made because of the bevel. So now we have our pokeball uh, completely modeled out, and the only thing that is left for us to do is the inner part. So I'm going to rotate it and open it up 90 degrees. Okay. So we have our inner part. Um, I'm going to save it again so we are not losing anything. And for the inner part, it's not too important to do it perfect, I guess. Um, but yeah, if you want to do it perfect, you can choose the black inside, uh, use with the um, polygon tool here. We are going to select everything. And with the UL, I'm going to uh, disable the center here. So control, click, click, and then it's going to um, make this not a selection, but actually it should be a, sele a selection, but like for here we can use it to make everything symmetric symmetrical. And just delete it like so. And then like here we should have some mirrors, so that's why I'm doing this. Oh. Okay, and then like for the other part, I'm just going to do it and eyeball it. You can do it perfectly by counting everything, but um, I'm not willing to count right now. So I guess right over here, we should continue. Okay. And actually I deleted a little bit too much, something like this. And now right here we can do it again or we can keep it like this. I'm just going to keep it like this and I'm going to go to select set selection and make this mirrors. And if you want you can do the same thing for the top part here. So go back here, red cap, um, red black cap, okay. And again control A to select everything. Actually, we should only select the inside. Well, we can just de um, deselect this part here. And then again, start doing the same thing. So uh, if you have a real Pokeball as a reference, uh, you can see that the inside is with mirrors uh, to keep the Pokemon inside. So um, that's what I'm trying to do right here. And then again, eyeball it. There we go, and go to select set selection, mirror, okay. So we have our selection for our Pokeball, we have our Pokeball completely modeled out and we can open it up and close it down. So that's it for this tutorial. And apart from that, well, I should close it down completely. I messed up. Okay, so I'm going back to the coordinations and change this to zero and um, well, the rotations, okay. Okay, so that's it on how to model a Pokeball. Thank you so much for watching and in the next tutorial we will be texturing it. Um, so yeah, see you then.